and tarp, tearing and tarp. Mama T, we unlock you. We got the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We unlocking people right now in the mighty name of Jesus, showing you who you are, who you are, and what you're called to do. Glory to God. That's that dunamis power. That's Strong's number 1411. That dunamis power, the miracle working power and ability of God, delegated authority given to you by God to do great and mighty exploits. You know whose you are? Huh. is your night of encounter. Yes! Your night, this night, is a night of encounter. Glory! Dynamite, don't miss, ticket, dynamite, don't miss.
Miss Tinga T. Tinga T. Tinga T. Give a mother glory cause he bought it for me. Yeah, yeah, we did, but never leave me lonely. His love and his mercy and his grace. This is living why I have a taste. Advertise campaign for the king. He's the truth and the light in a way. Yada, da, da, me. Hallelujah, holla, holla, holla. The God I serve is bigger than your mighty dollar. Keep my peace on Bobby. Gotta stay focused on my good, good father. There was healing in his wings through the power of Christ. I could do all things. Feel the atmosphere, Holy Spirit here. Your love is always near, but I don't have to fear. We chain, erasing the shame. There is grace in his name. Dynamite, dunamis, to your teeth. Dynam, dynam, dynamite, dunamis, to your teeth. Your presence, there is nothing but the love. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Dynamite, dunamis, to your teeth. Dynam, dynam, dynamite, dunamis, to your teeth. Your presence, there is nothing but the love. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Walking the epitome of liberty is resurrecting power, man, and living me. He took away me, he could wing so above all these evil things. Cause even when I laid down a slip, he forgave my behavior that was sick. Even though this life has been a trip, permanently praise on my lips. His love is extravagant and overflowing. Rest for the weary, keep going. He may give you and new, trust the way that he do when his better plans too. I gave him masters in return, he gave me beauty. Joy is my strength when I'm moody. Let the weak say I'm strong cause it's power. He making the hero out of cowards. Dynamite, don't miss, to your teeth. Dynam, dynam, dynamite, don't miss, to your teeth. Your presence there is nothing but the love. Holy Spirit coming from
Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. My name is Minister Desiree Galeo, and I welcome you to week three of our marriage seminar. We are so excited for the message that's going to come out today. Um, but before I do anything, I have to give honor to Prophetess Taryn, Mama T, I honor you, Mama T. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to host tonight. I, I honor you, Mama, and thank you for that. Uh, let me know, you guys, where you guys are calling in from. Put it in the chats. Let me know exactly where you're calling in from. We are so glad that you are here with Lifeline TNT Global Ministries. You could be anywhere. You could be putting your time into anything else, but you decided tonight to come in and to invest your time in yourself. And so I just want to give you a hand for that. Give yourself a hand for doing that tonight. So as I'm waiting for everyone to put where they're calling in from in the chat, uh, let me bring it up on this side. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Okay. So we have Keegan from uh, Rochester, New York. We have Nona from Huntsville. We have ooh, Shaniqua from Woodland. Hills. We have Hillary from Denton, Texas. We have Daisy from West Hollywood. Dora from Lakewood, California. Uh, Gail uh, from North Hollywood. Uh, Michaela from Sanford, Florida. And I know there was some up here. Uh, Latasha, my girl from Los Angeles. Uh, Sky from Mid City. Uh, Anthony from Barstow, California. Let me go up a little bit more. And Evangelist Alina, I don't see where you're from, Evangelist, but I know you're in California. <laughs> uh, blessings to all of you guys. Uh, let me check a few people here on YouTube. Um, we have Becky from Ontario. We have Cynthia Green, blessings from Texas. Uh, Kishana, uh, we have from Nebraska. We have Tunda from Florida. We have Natasha from Arizona. Welcome, welcome, welcome. On behalf of Prophetess Taryn and Lifeline TNT, we welcome you guys tonight. Thank you for spending your time with us. Um, so as you guys know, this is week three of our marriage seminar. I hope that you have been taking some, some nuggets. You've been taking some practical things that you can implement in your, in your life and in your relationships. Um, before I announce who our speaker is, let me tell you a little bit. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let me tell you a little bit about him, okay? Uh, he's he, he's a best-selling author. He's an international speaker. He's a college professor and a radio TV correspondent. Uh, he he's a conference host of the Vision Summit. Uh, he's a survivor of stage four cancer. So he's a walking miracle. He empowers people to overcome obstacles. Uh, he's the, he is the cousin of one of the world's most influential entertainers and musicians, the late legendary Prince. And he has just released his 12th best-selling book. Give him a hand. It's 12th, right? I'm trying to write my first. So I will write my first. Uh, but he wrote his 12th book and it's called Relationship Rules. If you haven't gotten this yet, uh, if, if some of the ladies can put in the chat, it's on Amazon. It's streaming. It's on a lot of different platforms, but definitely on Amazon Relationship Rules. Before I really introduce him and let him take off tonight, I want to read something. It's right in the beginning. And it talks about cleaning up your house. That spoke to me. There's so much. I love the way Dr. Connor writes his books. It's, it's so simple, but it's it's so true. <laughs> and I just be laughing when I'm reading it, right? So it says, clean up your house. You have to do more than organize your closet. You have to declutter your mind, your soul, and spirit. This is about more than shuffling through shoes, shirts, and skirts. You must shift through the shelves of your soul. It's about being courageous and enough to clean up your own character and your credit. How can you expect a spouse without having order in your house? It's time to do personal inventory and identify the areas that you need to strengthen. You're spending hours trying to get the latest tea and seek therapy on Clubhouse. Meanwhile, there's disorder and dysfunction in your house. It's time to get your own priorities in order. The whole world is on Zoom, but our vision is still blurry when it comes to relationships and interpersonal development. Are you enhancing your character, your credit, and yes, even your clean cleanliness? I saw a post on social media that read, you want to be a wife, but you can't clean your tub. You're worried about the wrong ring, baby. <laughs> I, I was laughing there. It's funny and truthful at the same time. It's time to do a deep cleaning on our internal and external house. Boom, man, I can't believe, I read that. And I'm just like, okay, 
Thank you, Dr. Connor. <laughs> Thank you for being truthful, right? And you got to be truthful with yourself on where you're at. So I would like to go ahead and announce to you guys tonight our speaker, our guest speaker. He's he's family, you know, so he's part of the Lifeline family. We welcome him tonight, uh, Mr. Dr. Connor. What an honor it is. Uh, thank you so much. Can everybody hear me tonight? Y'all can hear me? Cool, cool, yes, cool. Dr. Listen, Tom, I'm yes. so glad to be back with the Lifeline TNT fam. I had no clue, Desiree, that you was going to do a little excerpt reading tonight. Uh, we had story time with Desiree. I'm so glad. Uh, thank you for, for such an incredible introduction. We got, I, I see, uh, is that brother, if I'm pronouncing the name right, Gail? He, he, he's showing the book. I, that's what I love about this book. This book is not only touching our sisters, but incredibly giving empowerment to our brothers. What can we say tonight? I, I hope y'all are ready tonight to go to another level. Uh, this is, uh, is this week three? This is week three, yes, this is week three. And uh, I'm not just expecting double blessings, I'm expecting triple. Uh, as we honor the woman of God, uh, I, I just want you to, to answer this question in the chat real quickly. Um, what are you believing God for? in the area of relationships in marriage. I just want you to just type what you're believing God for uh, in the area of relationships and marriage. Maybe you say, I'm, I'm just believing God for my spouse. Maybe I'm just believing God for healing and wholeness uh, in, in this specific area that I am in my life. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, I want you just to just type that right now and uh, we're gonna just touch and agree that it's already done. Can we just honor the woman of God as well after you type your little message? After you type it, I want you to, uh, I want you to honor the woman of God, the one and only prophetess, Taryn, Nicole, Tarver. Come on, if you've been touched by the TNT at all <laughs> since you've been a member of Lifeline TNT, you ought to just thank God. Come on, don't hate celebrate tonight. Yes, don't hate congratulate, you, don't hate appreciate. Come on, praise God for, let her, let her be able to know where you are. Let her be able to hear you uh, in the spirit as you are celebrating her. Listen, it is so hard to be able to pour from an empty cup. And as much as Mama T pours out, as much as Prophetess Tarver pours out to us, we ought to be able to pour back into her. This is all the times that she prays, but she doesn't tell you about it. The times that she's up in the midnight hour, that she's travailing before the Lord, that she's trying to get a word in due season to be able to speak to your heart, to speak to your home, to speak to your house, to speak to your family. Come on, we, we, we thank God that he uh, brought her here for such a time as this, as she is, as I've said before, a modern day Esther um, for this day and this time of this generation. Um, what do y'all believe in God for? What do y'all believe in God for? Can we, can we look at it? Can we look at it? Somebody said wisdom and wholeness, a destiny partner, stability, happiness. Uh, somebody said, I'm believing him for a spouse. I'm believing him for, for wisdom and for a husband. We're, we're believing God that he's going to do all of that. He's going to solidify your relationships and your marriage we want to take it to another level tonight, but we want to do that always through prayer. Can we have just a word of prayer tonight uh, as we go before the Lord, as we begin to uh, share a word tonight in due season? And kind of gracious Father, we thank you for your love and your saving power. We thank you for the woman of God who you have given to us as an incredible gift to give us instruction, uh, to give us uh, understanding and wisdom so that we can build healthy relationships, but also purposeful partnerships. Fortify us by your word. We thank you for healing in the, in the houses tonight. We thank you for healing uh, from trauma and triggers and the past and negativity. We thank you right now for breathing a word of inspiration, a word of empowerment, a word of encouragement tonight in the life of my brother and my sister. We come against every demonic attack. We come against every technical difficulty. We come against every attraction and distraction. We thank you for life, liberty. We thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness, peace, and the overflow of your anointing in Jesus' name. If you believe it, just thank God for it. Thank God for it. Um, yes, yes, yes. Listen, tonight, if you're ready, I just need you to type ready. Tonight, I need you to type ready. 
Come on, are you ready tonight? If you were here last week, uh, if you were here last week and you missed it, you got to go back and watch the replay. Or if you were a part of it, you got to go back and watch it again. Uh, last week, uh, the subject matter was, are you a headache or a helpmate? Did anybody receive last week at all? Did anybody receive last week? I know y'all wondering where's, uh, we want to keep Brother Van Brown and his family in our prayers as well. I know we we, we don't have uh, Prophetess Tarver and Mr. Van Brown, but so y'all stuck with me tonight. Y'all stuck with the substitute again. Uh, but uh, we talked about, are you a headache or a helpmate? last week and uh we we broached it with the fact that when you know your value um you understand that you don't mind eating alone because you know what you bring to the table and when you know what you bring to the table what are you not so i just type it in the chat when i know what i bring to the table this is what i'm not michaela i see you you got it first i'm not a napkin you can't just use me up abuse me and discard of me just like that. I know what I bring to the table. I'm not, I'm not just a snack, I'm the whole meal. Uh, I am not a napkin. Uh, tonight, uh, I, I don't know how to come after that, so I, I gotta beeline it and we'll go to another level tonight, but I wanna share from this subject matter tonight. And uh, I hope you got your, your notepad, I hope you got your pen, your paper, Hope you got your Bible. I hope you got uh, your phone to take some notes with it. But I want to talk from the subject tonight. Uh, you're not needy. You're needed. I want to talk from that subject tonight. You're not needy, but needed. That's where I want to go. Uh, it, it's it's going to get better. It's going to get better as we go through it. Um, Oftentimes people who are needy come from a place of being thirsty oftentimes, being needy and being thirsty are in many cases synonymous because oftentimes when you're so thirsty, if you're looking for somebody to quench your thirst, you'll always be parched if not dehydrated. What did the word say? They that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be fulfilled. And the whole aspect of fulfillment does not come from a person. It does not come from a place. It does not come from a thing. It does not come from any other nouns that you are in many cases always around. It comes from your relationship with God that has to be the preeminent foundation for you to now build any type of relationship, much less courtship and marriage with the right type of purpose partner who God wants you to be with. If you don't know your purpose, how can you ever expect a purpose partner? As I've said before, you can't expect a purpose partner if you have not first partnered with your purpose. And I'm wondering tonight, do you know your purpose? Because oftentimes we're looking for people to complete us. I, I remember watching the movie Jerry Maguire. Uh, this, this, this throwback, this throwback Saturday. Uh, since it's Saturday Night Live, we might as well go there. I remember watching the movie Jerry Maguire and towards the end of that movie, uh, Jerry Maguire's love interest, this particular young lady said to him, you complete me. And like many people who are watching all the, the butterflies you just felt in your heart. You were just so enamored with the words that just uh, flow just like water from her lips. It was She was just so intoxicated with the exuberance of her intellectual verbosity. I mean, she was just so enamored with, 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 with so much love. But after I thought about that years and years later, I realized that in many cases was the worst thing that she could possibly ever say to somebody. Nobody will ever complete you right? You, they should be able to compliment you. And now there's a difference between compliment and compliment. See, most people are always focused on C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T. Well, he told me how nice my shoes were. He told me how nice my dress fit me. He, to he told me that my hair was, was whipped, dip fried, dyed, laid to the side. He told me that my hair, my, my, had my hair done, nail done, everything did, oh, I'm fancy. Oh, she told me that my suit was nice. She told me that she liked my change. She told me that she liked my particular glasses that were on my face. But the question is, 
Not only does she like your glasses, she wants to know, do you have any vision? Beyond her having some nice heels, where are her feet going? Are, are her steps ordered by the Lord? See, a lot of times we base that on the outside, but you don't just want somebody to compliment you, to tell you how good you look. You want somebody to C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T. Y'all don't know we was going to English class tonight. See, compliment means not only are you uh, compatible. See, so, so many times we build relationships simply off compatibility and we stop right there. Compatibility is not enough. You got to have suitability. I need a suit. See, suitability now brings us to the place of Genesis where you speak to the whole aspect of help meet. Right. And that's more than just help me to meet the bills. That's more than just help me to make the dinner and help me to clean the dishes and dry them off and help me to fold the clothes. Right. That's more than to, to help me look for a dress in the mall. It, it, it's about helping me to complete the vision that God gave me. Brothers, you can't expect a woman to follow you if you don't know where you're going. Right. See, see the word even help meet. It's, it's so interesting that that every sister ought to just give herself a high five. Every every woman, you ought to give yourself a high five if you know you are help me. See, the fact of the matter is help me spiritually is synonymous to Holy Spirit. What, what is the Holy Spirit known as? The paraclete. The Holy Spirit is, for those of us who know our Bible, he is he is noted as our helper in the spirit realm. The helper will bring everything back to your remembrance is what the word says. But the Bible calls the woman that God created for Adam, I will make him in help meet because in many cases in a physical natural form, it's on the same level as the Holy Spirit. See, see, the, the spirit of God that you have on the inside of you to my dear sisters should begin to, in many cases, provide a panoramic perspective to where this man's vision can flourish and go. But, but check this out, brother. A woman can't help you with your vision if you don't have one. Because if you don't have a vision, you just reaching in the dark, grasping at straws, and you don't even know where you're going. You, you in a dark room looking for a black cat that's not even there. You got to be able to turn on the light. You got to be able to have a vision. Why? Because the Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. I don't know. Am I going too deep too quickly? It, it, let, me, let me lower my voice a little bit. I'm getting a little too excited tonight. I, listen, I, are y'all watching the NCAA game or something? I don't know. I can't get no help. Is anybody talking to me tonight? Y'all watching March Madness? You're helping us. Go Dr. deeper. You're Go deep. Go deep. And in the, and, <laughs> We're here. Uh, as a fact of the matter, relationships are in madness. We're we going to move from March madness to March gladness tonight. We're going to march forth and build healthy relationships. We're going to win tonight in love, leadership, leveraging our purpose simply because the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Do you know why so many relationships are perishing today? Why are so many families, why are so many uh, marriages are failing? Because there's no vision. And because there's no vision, there's now no implementation. See, we want to go from, we just want provision. Lord, just bless me with provision. What was he going to provide for you for? Because the, the suffix of provision is vision. Why would I provide something for you if you don't have a vision of how to handle it? Brother, you got to have a vision. Sister, you got to have a vision for what it is that you expect. You got to have a vision that goes beyond, I want them to be six feet, six figures and a six pack. Because last time that happened, you were just left with 666. That just left you with a devil. You, you, you got to be, you got to have a vision that's bigger Come than on. just her cleavage. And let me, let me talk to somebody tonight. See, see, brother, you're not marrying uh, her, her cleavage. You're marrying her character. Well, hello, somebody. Since you're not marrying his wallet, you're marrying his wisdom. If the brother doesn't have wisdom, it don't matter what's in his wallet. He's going to lose it. Since you're not marrying the car that he drives, you want to know, does the brother have drive? Is he living his life in reverse? Is his purpose parked? Is he going to crash into his past? I want to know. 
where do you see your life going? Uh, Brother Van, I, I'll uh, testify for him tonight, but he, he mentioned, I remember some time ago, he mentioned that he and his wife Lolita, before he even married her, he gave her a portfolio of a, here it is, not a two-year vision, not a five-month vision, not even a 10 or 15-year vision. Let me go all the way up. Not one, not two, not three, not four. I wish I could bring LeBron in here tonight. Not a 20-year not vision, not a 30 or 40-year vision, uh, but he said, I got a 50-year vision because guess what? This this relationship, matter of fact, this, this marriage is going to live bigger than just beyond us. This is before. This is for our children's children. Uh, uh, what did the Bible say? Uh, uh, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. I want a, I want a vision. I want a marriage that spans beyond just me. To where here it is. We ain't just securing the bag, but we securing the vision. I want a marriage that breaks generational curses. Come on, I just need somebody to type. I need somebody just to type tonight. Every generational curse is broken. Generational curses are broken. The generational curse that has been over your family of poverty, the generational curse that has been of depression, the generational curse that has been in a cesspool of negativity to where you just keep going in circles all around and around and around, the generational curse of teenage pregnancy, the generational curse of abuse, the generational curse of not being able to, to get out of the place of where it is that you are. That curse over your life is broken. It's broken tonight. That generational curse, here it is, of divorce is broken tonight. That, that generational curse of being able to get engaged, always being a fiance, but never a bride. That, that, that generational curse of always being able to go to a wedding, but never being able to cross it as a, as a groom or as a bride tonight, that's broken over your life. Tonight is your night for you to move your life to the next level because God has given you freedom. He who the son has set free is free indeed. And God is releasing vision even tonight. He's releasing restoration into your house. He's releasing he, he's, he's breaking you of the past, the, 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 the myriad of the X's that seem to, to have put a hex on your life. God said it's broken over your life tonight. What seemingly uh, kept you in a place of uh, being able to confuse uh, a, a soulmate and a soul tie is broken over your life. God is releasing discernment tonight. And here it is, that discernment's going to give you direction. The direction's going to give you vision. The vision's going to give you implementation. The implementation's going to bring instruction. The instruction's going to bring, bring provision tonight. Because you're not going to perish, but you're going to prosper, even in a pandemic. I got news tonight because uh, I believe we're here because we, we recognize the fact that we don't just want to be, we don't just want to get married. We want to stay married. I believe we're here tonight because those of us will understand that the wedding is the sprint, but the marriage is the marathon. And too many times people are only enamored with just getting a ring, but will they do the work when oftentimes here it is when they're hitting the ring? <laughs> Let me say that twice because it's also nice. Beyond you just getting the ring, can you stick and stay to do the work when it seems as if you're being hit in the marriage ring? I'm not talking about from person to person because we shouldn't condone abuse at all, but I'm just talking about being hit from the storms of life, being hit with, with the, the whole aspect of being able to try to get along with somebody to becoming one. That is not easy. To becoming one means friction. Do you hear me? See, see, when you get married, the man, you, you're pronounced as man and woman, right? But being a husband and wife takes years to develop. You, you're just man and woman when you get married. But being husband and being wife, being a husband that's not a hammer, being a wife that's not a knife, that takes years to develop. Because if you want to, let's just keep it real tonight. The, the person who you're in a relationship with or the person who you married or aspire to marry, you weren't raised to be with them. <laughs> and here it is. They weren't raised to be with you. 
right? I got to dwell according to knowledge. And this is the fact of the matter is so many times we mess up relationships because we have not developed the foundation of friendship. Oh, y'all don't like that word. See, I, <laughs> y'all, don't, y'all don't like that word tonight. See, yep. I just, uh, we here. See, to, <laughs> y'all don't like that. Y'all, Y'all, y'all don't like that F word. Y'all don't like that word of friendship tonight. See, we, we just want to, we just want to skip the, the stage of, of friendship, go to relationship. We just want to skip, skip, uh, skip the stage of friendship and jump the broom because we saw the movie Jump the Broom and just become a bride and just become a groom, right? But guess what? No, you're going to have to sweep around your own. You take that same, take that same broom groom and, and sweep around some of the mess that's in your life first. Do that inductive study. And, and the fact of the matter in the place and the inference of the stage of friendship is where you gotta ask some serious questions. See, because I wasn't raised to be with you, sis. Sis, you weren't raised to be with me or, or however the dynamic of your relationship or your marriage is. They were not raised, you were not raised to be with each other. And since we were not raised to be with each other, we got to have some serious dialogue to discover how were you raised? See, see, how were you raised? Have you really asked people the question of what was love like in your home? Was there a lack of love? Was there a provision of love? How, how do you, do you even know your own love language? I, I encourage you to read the book by Dr. Gary Chapman talks about the five love languages. And he expresses that in the whole aspect of words of affirmation, of physical touch, of gifts, of acts of service, of uh, uh, words of encouragement, many of those specific dynamics and dialogues, acts of service, all those things. Do you know what your love language is? Because the fact of the matter is oftentimes we love people the way that we think they need to be loved versus actually loving somebody the way that they need to be loved, right? the way that you ask those questions, how do you really need to be loved? And some people don't even know how they need to be loved because the fact of the matter is they've been hurt so much that oftentimes for many people, it hurts to be happy. See, so many times we ignore red flags because red is our favorite color. We're so used to abuse. We're so used to affliction. Matter of fact, we're addicted to being afflicted. If somebody's treating you bad, you good with it. But if somebody starts treating you good, now that's a bad thing because you're so used to the negative. You're so used to toxicity. You're so used to somebody putting their hands on you or demeaning you, giving you verbal or physical abuse. But this is, this is what it is tonight. That curse of toxicity is broken over your life. The curse of abusive relationships. The curse of you allowing people to treat you like a doormat and just walk all over you. That, that lack of having a backbone is over in your life. Tonight is your night to loosen and let it go because marriage, here it is, is more than a contract. Marriage is a covenant. And I believe, sis, your future husband wants to change two things about you. He wants to change your last name and he wants to change your address. Let me say that again. Two things that are uh, a kingdom man wants to change about a kingdom woman. He, listen, I, he is not about her being a small size, a mid size, or a large size. He, he he's focused on the size of her heart. He's focused on the size of her spirit. He's focused on the size of the ability of her being able to do warfare in the spirit. I want to change two things about you. I want to change your last name, and I want to change your address. Why? Because I can expect a spouse because I got order in my house. And the fact of the matter is, even as I said before, we got to do the inductive study and work to get our house in order before we try to bring somebody into our house. We, we got to clean up the certain areas in our life. We got to look at the, 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 the spider webs of worry. We got to clean up the catacorner areas. We got to open up the, the closets of what it is that we've thrown all our toxicity into it and we tried to hide it. Listen, you've given everybody a key to your door, but God. And Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door. Now everybody got a key to your house, but the person you won't let in is Jesus. Isn't that something? Anybody can come as, 
anybody can come and go as they please, but you still have not allowed the Savior to come in and do the work that's needed and necessary. See, see, I really believe a lot of us don't want change because being toxic gets us attention. <laughs> I, I want to... <laughs> You might not like me after the night. I don't, I don't know. You're going to, to let next week is last week. Next week is uh, the, the final week. I hope you all have me back. See, see, some of us don't want to change because us being pitied gets us attention. I don't know. Have you ever seen the meme of somebody who, who uh, faked as if they were in the hospital room and everybody was under the person's post and they were right now? I'm praying that you get be better. I hope you feel better. And when you really, us looked at the photo and you scrolled it out a little bit more you found out that it that it wasn't any uh type of tubes that was in the person's nose what it was was a a, a headphone set from apple <laughs> he, he had a headphone set he had the ears of the headphone in his nose he, he really didn't want help the brother wanted attention i, I need to get my likes up why i, I gotta get my likes up because i don't love myself I don't get my likes up because I don't know my worth and my value. And we're, we're so enamored by what people say about us because if they're not giving any praise, then now we don't feel any good about ourselves because we didn't get a dopamine shot from everybody else. Listen, if you live for people's applause, you'll die when they quit clapping. You can't allow people's opinions to become your prison. You got to love yourself. You got to know your worth because the right person for you since your husband is not just going to be impressed by your hips, he's going to be impressed by your heart. The right man for you is not just going to be so enamored by uh, the curves on your body. Uh, because the most important curve is the smile that's on your lips. The, the, the right woman for you, brother, is going to want to help complement the vision that God gave you to bring out the best in you. She said, I know you have a linear vision, but I want to bring something that's panoramic. I know you only see it this way, but I see it another way because the fact of the matter is a woman is so gifted. Sis, you got to know your value. You got to know your worth because you got multiplication all over you. You dealt with too many folks who brought division. You dealt with too many folks who brought subtraction. But this is what it is. Every woman has the gift to multiply. I just need every sister just to type multiply. Come on, this is more than just two, plus, two times two tonight. This is more than just uh, 20 times five. I, I just need every sister just to type multiply. I, I got the gift to multiply. Why? Because if you give a woman groceries, she'll give you a meal. That's multiplication right there, if I tell you. If you give a woman a house, she'll decorate it and turn it into a home. If you give a woman a seed, brothers, what is she going to give you? She's going to give you a child, boy, girl, whatever it is. She, she's going to give you that. If you give a woman, here it is, if you give her her some mess too, she gonna give you some stress back. And do I got a few sisters who, who will testify tonight to say, yes. listen, I, 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 you, can, you can get these prayer hands, but you can also get these other hands too. I'm, I know how to warfare, not just in the spirit, but also in the natural. A woman has the gift to multiply. That's why he said, be fruitful and multiply, right? The Adam could not be fruitful and multiply until his wife was on the scene. Brother, there's certain things that you can accomplish in your singleness. There's certain things that you won't even be able to accomplish in your singleness until you get with the right spouse. See, see brother, the right rib will make you breathe a lot easier. See, the fact of the matter is oftentimes, brothers, our, our visual acuity has clouded our vision. You know what I mean by that. You're looking at breast, legs, hips, and thighs. And isn't it interesting? The woman was not taken uh, from the man's chest. The woman was not taken from the thigh. The woman was not taken from the leg. The woman was taken from the rib. And so many times, brothers are so focused on breast, legs, hips, and thighs, when really we need to be focused on ribs. I don't wonder if y'all got that tonight. I, 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 you, you've been with enough breast, legs, hips, and thighs. You need the right rib in your life. See, the right rib will make you breathe a lot easier. The wrong one is going to make you 
cough, hack, sneeze, and suffer from asphyxia. She's going to cause you to be wheezing. But you need the right one to help your vision breathe. And I believe tonight God is breathing on your vision again. God's breathing on that idea. God's breathing on your tenacity. God's breathing on here it is, who it is that you are. Because the right person is not going to pray on you. They're going to pray with you and for you. Listen, what is it to have a ring if it's not from the right person and if it's from and if it's the wrong timing? Hear me clearly. What is it to have a ring if it's not the right person and the wrong timing? What is it to have the right person at the wrong time? What is it? Because oftentimes you've got to understand that timing is everything. I told you last week, if you rush it, you might ruin it. Waiting on God is not a waste of time. It's better to wait long than to marry wrong. I got to be in the timing of God. Because you got to understand this, the love you've been expecting is coming. But here it is, you got to have some love for yourself. I told you last week, love is the thread, but purpose is the glue. Love is not enough to sustain a relationship. Love is not enough to sustain a marriage. People are divorced, but they still love each other, but they can't be together. You said goodbye to your ex because you found out there's good and goodbye, and sometimes there's hell and hello. Uh, hello, somebody. Right? You were fine, but you're not mine. So I had to social distance myself from you because you don't need to be in my space at all, right? Love is the thread, purpose is the glue. I don't need somebody to just be in a relationship with me, to, with me to love me. I love myself. I appropriate the love of God in my life. I need you to compliment the love that I already have. And here it is, I need you to come to the table with some purpose. That's what I need you to come to the table with. See, see, God will position you for the right one that he has for you. And, and oftentimes we talk about becoming the right one for the right one. Here it is. You got to become the right one for the right one. And the right one has to be you. You got to be right for yourself first. We so focused on saying I do to somebody else. But have you ever said I do to you and the purpose God gave you? God, I'm saying I do to, to the purpose that you gave me so that I don't have to compete for love because you're too unique to compete. You're too rare to compare. I've got to move into a place of understanding that leadership first begins with good fellowship. And here it is, the right man is looking for a wife who adds value to his life. The right man is looking for the, the right woman who hears from God and knows the timing of God. Sis, you can't complain about a man's leadership. Here it is, if you don't have good fellowship. And we gotta, we gotta always equal the balance out because brother, you can't complain about her fellowship if you don't have good leadership. Question is, where are you leading her? What can she expect from you? Are you up one day and down tomorrow? Are you depressed one day and have joy the next day? You've got to get into a place of consistency, right? Proverbs chapter 20, verse six, as I mentioned last week, we always talk about Proverbs 31, but I told you I I'm more English than math, but I know a little math and I think 20 comes before 31, if I'm correct. Right, so really we should be talking more about Proverbs chapter 20, verse six, than Proverbs chapter 31, because Proverbs 31 is not written from a woman to a woman. It's written from a mother to her son, King Lemuel. She, oft, she starts off the chapter, don't give your strength to women. And see, the fact of the matter is so many times as, as, of us as men, we have wasted our strength. 
on chasing skirts. You chase more skirts than you know scriptures. I, I want to talk to somebody tonight. I, I hope I'm getting on your nerves tonight because when I get on your nerves, it brings change. Uh, you, you, you chase so many things because you were knee deep. Here it is. But do you have the wherewithal to say I'm knee dead? I, I want to talk to somebody. You, you that's, that's crazy. You, you, you know more skirts than you do scriptures. Something wrong with that. Because Proverbs 20 verse 6 holds us to the question of who can find a faithful man? When I'm faithful, I got to be faithful in my mindset. I, I got to be faithful to say, yes, yeah, she looked good, but I can't lust after. I got to be faithful in the whole aspect that I got I to gotta be the man, the husband for my spouse. I got to be the right husband for the wife that I, that I, that I have in my house. I got to be the, I got to prepare as a husband for the spouse that I'm expecting. Can I be faithful in my career? Can I be faithful in my character? Can I be faithful to Christ? Can I be faithful in my calling? Because as a result of being faithful, now it puts me in a position to expect a woman who's virtuous. Sis, how can you expect a man to be faithful if you're not virtuous? A wise woman buildeth her house, but a foolish woman plucketh it down with her hands. I, I just want to talk to all the, the wives tonight real quickly, because I think the brothers will go with me on this. Uh, but the Bible said it's better to dwell on the corner of a housetop than with a brawling and a contentious woman in a wide house. That's serious. I, I mean, it's better for me to take my blanket and my pillow on the top of a roof so I could at least find some peace rather than her cut me up in pieces. I want to talk to somebody tonight. I told you you a wife, not a knife. If you a knife, you're cutting the brother up. I don't need you to cut them up. I need you to sew them up. <laughs> I, I need you to sew the brother up. Right? It's, it's better to, to have a morsel of food than a, than a whole fine Michelin meal, steak cuisine, and it's nothing but negativity across the table. I'll be fine with my uh, government cheese sandwich. I'll be fine with my peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I have me some peace. You can argue around the steak. Uh, I, I'm just gonna remove myself from the table and I'm gonna go right up to, I'm not gonna even go to the attic. I'm gonna be on top of the roof chilling there. Right, I, I got to have peace in my home, but guess what? There can't be peace in your home if there's not peace in here. See, a lot of times we're looking for somebody to bring us happiness. Listen, I, I, I'll, I'll bring, can I bring Will and Jada to the table tonight? Can I do that? Will and y'all know what, y'all know what it is. Uh, can I bring uh, Will Smith to the table? Uh, I am legend. Can I bring yes. Jada Pinkett so we can set it off tonight? Yes. I, I will not bring yes. August to the table. I'm gonna leave, I'm, August is not for a few months away and I'm not gonna bring that artist there. But I, I wanna bring Will and Jada here because Jada said this, she said this, I thought it was absolutely powerful. She said, it is not my husband's responsibility to make me happy. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, y'all don't like that one. It is quiet in this cyber sanctuary tonight, right? See, see, happiness doesn't begin from them. Here it is, not even happiness, joy begins in him. See, happiness, let's break the word happiness down. Happiness is based on what's happening. Oh, you bought me a bag today? I'm happy. You didn't take the trash out last night. I'm not happy with you. Let, we, let's talk to the married couples. We, we made love last night. I'm happy. You said you got a headache tonight. I'm trying to pray that thing away. I'm not happy. In the name of Jesus, the, the blood. Can I talk to some real folk tonight? Loose your hold. Happiness is based on what's happening. And, 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 and here it is. I'm, I'm on blow. I ain't even got to the I ain't, I ain't even got to the place where I want to be at yet. Tonight I'm gonna talk about five needs of a man, five needs of a woman. I'm almost there. 
Every round's going higher and higher. See, we, we, we focus on, we've made happiness transactional because as I said last week, we've come to the table of relationships and marriage with a hand out to take, but not a hand to give. Right, see, intimacy has to go beyond physical. Let me just talk to the brothers real quickly. Brother, you gotta understand this, touching her without touching her really touches her. I don't, I don't know, do I got a few sisters who, who will vouch with me on that? Touching her without touching her really touches her. Because oftentimes, if, if COVID-19 has taught us anything, as I said before, COVID-19 has taught us, can you touch somebody without touching somebody? Well, now we gotta be social distance. Can you, can you literally, touch somebody's heart without using your hand? Can you be there without being there? Can you be there as a prayer partner? Can you be there with a, with a word of encouragement? Can you be there to be able to speak life into their life? Because if you consider yourself to be a leader, then you gotta be able to lead her. The Bible says you got to love your wife as Christ loved the church. If you want her to submit to you, then I ask you the question, who are you submitted to? Right? Because it don't just start and end with you to say, well, I'm just the head. No, the head has to have a covering. God has to be the head of your life, bro, for you now to be the head over her. Right? Because the head comes with a level of responsibility. I know sisters say, well, yeah, I know he might be the head, but I'm the neck. I I'm gonna turn that thing if I need to, uh, if the brother's going in the wrong direction. God has to be the head of your life. And, and sister, it's got to get to that place to where we understand that submission is not control. Uh. See, we, we've got a generation of individuals who say, well, no, a, a, a woman can do just as much as a man can do and this, that, the other man. Uh, I, I refuse to be under his wing and under his shadow. See, the fact of the matter is submission is not under control. The reason that is said is because those who have been at the head, those who have had that title of leading have had no function. It's no need for you to call yourself a leader and have a title, but you don't have a function. You don't function in the whole aspect of what it is that God wants you to operate in. If you think about that word submission, let's look at that word real deep and clear. Sub means under. Somebody just type the word submission tonight. Sub means under. Submission does not mean put a low jack on your ankle. Submission does not mean, well, it takes you generally 10 minutes for you to get from Kroger to the house. It takes you 10 minutes to get from Publix back home. Why did it take you 15 minutes? That's not submission, that's control. Sub means under, like a submarine is submerged underwater. But then there's another part of submission. You got sub, which means under, then you got mission. Mission now speaks to vision. Mission now speaks to values. Mission now speaks to bylaws. So the mission, we are submitted to that. We are both under, here it is, the mission. But if you don't know what your mission is, you don't have a covering. See, okay, we, we, had, we, we had a disagreement. But the disagreement that put us out in proximity from each other should now bring us back under submission unto one another because now we have the blueprint that this is bigger than us. We're submitted to the vision that God has given us because this is about our children's children. We're submitted to the vision that God has given us because we're gonna have love in our home. We're submitted to the vision that God has given us because he's got great things in store for us. Amen. Amen. We've got the, the one and only prophetess Taryn Tarvon tonight. Y'all to praise <laughs> God for her. She's, she's driving and she's driven. 
that that part. <laughs> Doctor, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say, hopefully, uh, you can hear me, you guys, in this point in my car. Uh, you know, a woman can be the neck and the man needs the head, but we need a covering when women get out of our position in a role we're carrying something we shouldn't be carrying. And, you know, if you have to use the wisdom of Esther's women, you have to use the women of better wisdom of Esther. She was the queen, but she understood she had a king. And when the king would have given her everything, she had to know how to get everything out of the king. So she didn't just come in saying, blabbing her mouth and saying what she wanted. She was so careful to choose her word wisely when he said she came in, she didn't her fasting and coming in gave her the scepter, but she said, Can I cook for you? Imagine, can I cook for you? He said, Up to half of the kingdom, come to a banquet that I might give with you. He felt wanted, he felt needed, he felt desired that she would risk her life to come to ask him a question. So he's willing to give her anything because she was able to please the king and she was concerned. She didn't come in with her, her request first. He said, what can I do? And then she says one more time, come to another banquet tomorrow. Bring your dignitary again. And he said, what you do tonight, girl? I must be doing amazing. You have to cheer your husband on. You have to, have to make him know that he is the king of your life and that you chose a man that can lead you. And then you can turn the neck because you have submitted to the head. You have loved the head. You have cherished the head. And anything that you, any other belief that you have is a demonic belief, but not of God, if you understand the way God works. Now, you may be saying, well, my husband, you don't know what kind of husband I have. Well, you have to understand that order is still important as long as he's not asking you to sin. For love gives. So if you love, you should give. So you have to be concerned about the us and the we, not the me and the I. So when he comes the second time, and then she tells her request, this man is trying to kill me. She said that from the beginning, but she chose her words carefully. So in order to turn your neck, turn the head, your neck has to be able to be in place. And where a place where she is submitting to the head. That's all I had to say, Dr. Carter. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. We've, we've got to have order. Uh, God operates from a level of order. And there has to be a level of, of order through submission. Um, let me take it to this place. There are couples who are married. There are couples who have been married for years, but are still not husband and wife. Contractually, they are. But in many cases, they are more like roommates. Legally, they have the title but lovingly they don't function in the position. Why? Because there is a lack of submission. Now check this out. Submission is not just one-sided. Submission is twofold. I gotta be submitted to Christ, but I've also got to be in a place of submission one toward, toward another. Sister, submission Submission honors your husband and his leadership. Now check this out. If you're not married, sis, you don't submit. <laughs> we, we got too many women yeah, submitting to boyfriends. <laughs> we, we got too many sisters submitting because a man took you to McDonald's on a date. Because you Netflix and chilled with him and watched uh, a movie on Amazon Prime. but he's not in the primary place of his vision, right? So you got to understand this. If serving and submitting is below you, then I got bad news. Marriage is beyond you. Let me say that again. If serving and submitting is below you, then marriage is beyond you because one person is not inferior to the other. Submission is twofold. As I said before, submission does not mean control. Submission does not mean put a tether on somebody. Submission, here it is, is not manipulative or controlling. Submission doesn't make you the FBI. Submission doesn't make you the CIA. Submission doesn't make you uh, a private investigator to put somebody under surveillance. 
Submission don't make you map quest or Google Maps. But real love and submission moves you from restraint to constraint. What did the Bible say? That the love of Christ restraineth us, right? No, 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 no. The love of Christ constraineth us. Because if I have to restrain you, that means I'm pulling your arm back from you doing what you want to do. But constraint means I have many options. But because I love you, I sacrifice what I want because I'm not needy, I'm needed. And so are you. And so we've got to get to that place to where when I'm submitted to God in that place, now I need to be seeking to hear the voice of God. How should I treat my spouse? How should I treat the man that God has for me? How should I treat my husband? How should I treat your wife? How should you do all of those things? Because we've got to understand that differences don't mean deficiencies. What do I mean by that? Just by a show of hands, ladies, how many times have you said, I don't understand men? Brothers, how many, brothers, by a show of hands, how many times have you said, I don't understand women? Y'all have heard men are from Mars, women are from Venus, they say. See, see, you, you even think on the whole, you even deal with the whole level of, of physicality. Men think of intimacy in terms of physical terms. S-E-X. Women think of intimacy in terms of emotional terms. T-A-L-K. One of the most painful things for a man to hear a woman say is, uh, baby, we need to talk. <laughs> That's one of the worst words. You're wondering what's going on. See, see, differences don't mean deficiencies. It means we can complement each other. So let's look at his needs. Let's look at her needs. And, and this is what we always say. We always say happy wife, happy life. But it's too one-sided. It should be happy spouse, happy house. Amen. Not only, not only should the woman have joy in the marriage, but the man should too. I heard of one, at least one brother agree to that. I, I should have heard a, a whole bunch of Amen. Bellowin, Amen. Uh, brothers who, who Amen. sing tenor. Uh, saying, hey, man, yeah, yeah. It's not just happy wife, happy life. It's happy spouse, happy house. Here it is. I want you to take notes on this. Every brother, I, you need to take notes on this. I want to give you the top five needs of a woman. A woman's top five needs. And don't worry, sis. We're going to get to the brothers, too. But a woman's top five needs. I need you to write these things down. And matter of fact, you can type it in the chat, too, sisters. You can also take notes. Uh, you can say, I'm taking notes for the brothers. I want to make sure that they got these things down. Number one, woman's top need. Uh, matter of fact, this, this is not necessarily any order, but these are the top five preeminent needs. Number one, affection. Affection. A woman needs unconditional love and acceptance. A woman needs unconditional love and acceptance. Imagine your spouse loving you completely without uh, even hesitating over your mistakes. Now that sounds just like Christ, right? Right? Uh, love, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. What did Christ do? Christ, Christ gave his life for the church. But if I'm in a marriage, I, that means I'm, I'm giving my life. I'm putting my life on the line for my woman, because here it is. It's more than just a physical death. It's literally, I'm dying to myself. Listen, brother, of the makings of beautiful women, there is no end. Hear me. Women don't just stop looking good to you because you said, I do. Of the makings of beautiful women, there is no end. You have to end it. Because if you, if you let your eyes feast on it too long, your feet going to follow. I want to talk to some real brothers. That's good. Right? I, I got to end it. I, gotta, I can see it, but I don't have to see it. 
I, I got something at home. You got to say sometimes you're going to have to talk to yourself, brother. And that's why that's why Paul said, I die daily. I got to put this flesh under subjection. Women ain't going to stop looking good to you. And a lot of times brothers go into a marriage for a lust fix. And you trying to bring lust to the table and she wants affection. Right? It, it, but that's the core of unconditional love. It goes beyond my selfish needs and it goes to now being a supplier to meet her needs. Listen, you can't reflect God's love for her and your love for her. You, you, gotta, you, you can reflect it by encouraging her. You got to stand with her. You got to compliment her, brother. You got to tell her that she's beautiful. You got to respect her opinion sometimes. Right. You, you can agree to disagree sometimes, but you got to get to that place uh, to where you respect your opinion. Listen, I don't know. Last time. I don't know the last time uh, a woman apologized to you, bro. I don't, I don't know. Uh, sometimes a woman will go to the grave before she apologizes because because here it is, brother. If you're trying to argue with a woman, it ain't going to work. Don't 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 even try. Did it ever work with your mama? No, nope. no. It, it, if it's, wow. listen, it, it didn't work with mom, it ain't gonna work with her. Sometimes we just gotta say, baby, how can I love you better today? But she also gotta not argue you down to the ground. Gotta get to that place to where still, I'm under that umbrella of submission, one toward another. It goes with spending time with her, it goes with serving her. Number two, another need after affection. <laughs> somebody said, I almost choked on my drink. <laughs> I'm trying to bring uh, uh, the word and uh, a little bit of humor tonight. Number two, after affection, communication and conversation. Listen, brother, a woman needs emotional intimacy. Brother, you are stimulated by what you see. Not that a woman is not stimulated by what she sees, but she's more stimulated by what she hears. The, 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 the greatest organ that uh, in many cases uh, turns the light switch on is uh, what's between her ears. But society has taught you to focus on what's between her legs. Remember I told you, oftentimes we have uh, totally debilitated what the love word love is about. We have defined love as legs open very easily. It's not what's between her legs, it's what's between her ears. So she needs emotional intimacy. When, when your wife hears the word intimacy, remember, it, it's not so much sex. She's thinking about emotional connection and communication. Do I got a few ladies? Am I, am I, am I talking right, ladies? Am I, am I talking right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. Yep. See, see a woman, yes, a, a wife, a yes, woman, sir. and even a, a, the Bible calls you a wife before you even won. You have the qualities of wife, but you're his wife when he marries you. She wants a marriage that has vulnerability attached to it. She wants to share her inner thoughts. She wants to share her feelings. She wants to share what she thinks. Sis, brother, matter of fact, ask your woman, bro, how was her day? Just, just do a little test example. Try it out tomorrow. Or, or matter of fact, later tonight. Baby, how was your day? I'm telling you, she gonna tell you from the time she slipped her feet in her furry slippers at 5.35 in the morning to when she took the rollers out of her hair, to when she had to fight traffic, right? She's, she's going to tell you what she had to deal with when she was talking to the person on the, on the phone. She's going she gonna to say, she, she, might, she might mess up and call you baby girl because she was talking about her conversation that she had with her girlfriend. She's going to tell you from the time that she uh, filed her papers and did all this. She's very detailed. You ask a man, sis, you ask a man how his day was. He's going to tell you it was good. You ain't got nothing else to say? No, because for us, it really was. Nothing happened. We only, if, if we could quantify our day in, in emojis, 
brothers, we'd only have one emoji on with sunglasses. I'm, I'm scared to say what I'm about to say for the, fist, for the sisters with the emojis. You have about 30 different emojis, 30 different emotions, emoticons, and expressions. Right? She, sometimes she's just going through her day and she's just, she's just so feeling oriented. It is what it is. You got to be able to respect that. You got to be able to listen to her. And here it is. You got to respond with more than, oh, yeah, really? Uh-huh. <laughs> you got to give her some conversation back. Right? So you got to show her that you have an understanding heart. You got to give her attention. You got to give her affection. You got to build a rapport with her. And that rapport with her helps to resolve conflict, but also safeguard her in the relationship. I mean, even on average, women use way more words than a man does in a given day. We got to work on our level of communication because oftentimes as men, we are paralyzed in that aspect. Number three, after affections, number one, number two, communication, conversation. Thirdly, spiritual connection. Here it is, a wife wants a marriage as a cord with three strands. A, a marriage is not just uh, made up of two, you and her. A, a great marriage takes three. Now, I ain't talking about no side chicks. I ain't talking about no side brother. I'm talking about God. You, matter of fact, he shouldn't even be on the side. <laughs> he should be right smack dab in the middle. You, them, and God. She's got to be inextricably woven into a relationship, into the marriage relationship. A woman wants to grow spiritually. A kingdom woman we're talking about here. She wants you to grow spiritually. A woman doesn't, here it is, a, a kingdom woman don't want to do all the praying all the time. She should meet you at night in prayer. She should meet you in the morning in prayer. You should be covering her, not just with your arm, but you should ought to be covering her with prayer. When's the last time that you laid hands on your wife beyond just a hug, beyond just trying to start the mood? But you took her hands and you said, baby, we just going to pray. I know everything might be going right in our relationship. I know everything might be going right in our marriage. I know we might have had some hiccups here, there, and the other. But I just want to pray with you and for you. A praying family stays together. Because here it is. You got, you got to understand this. Marriage is, is a merger. But here it is. Marriage is also a ministry. Your first ministry is to your spouse, your family. Well, I'm taking care of the things of God. I'm, I'm, I'm evangelizing. I'm giving out tracts in the neighborhood. But your house is out of order. Well, I love God, but your wife don't think so because of how you treat her. You are public success, but your marriage is a private failure. I gotta have order. Somebody just type order tonight. You can pray, preach, prophesy, slay oil, but you can't even pray in your own house. You can't drive the demons out of your own house, but you sending them out of everybody else's house? Where they do that at? Number four, affirmation. I told you number one. Affection. Secondly, communication, conversation. Thirdly, spiritual connection. Number four, affirmation. A woman has to have daily encouragement. Brother, you got to tell her she's your best friend. You got to tell her she's the best wife. Here it is. You got to leave her some thank you notes every now and then. You, you got to hit her with a Stevie Wonder. I just called to say... You ain't even got to be able to sing it, but tell her I love you. Got You just got to give her some just because roses. It, am, am, I am I telling the truth, ladies? Do I, sisters? Y'all ought to be yes, screaming tonight. Absolutely, yes. You're telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hold on, y'all yes. too quiet. Maybe, maybe, yes. I, maybe I just, 
I just skip number five and just go straight to the fellas. Maybe that's what it is. It was te you right? teaching you got, so you good. Gotta... We, were, we just wanted you to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, Minister De Desiree. Um, you you got to encourage her by understanding her wiring, right? Pointing out her potential, appreciating her contribution, baby. That baby, I had a, a thousand of your meals, but this one was slapping a night. You you. <laughs> Matter of fact, you you didn't put your foot in this one. You put them Christian Louboutin heels in this one that I bought you. You just amen. You just amen. laid it out. You you gave us you gave me Thanksgiving before, and I'm I'm giving. I, I got nothing but Thanksgiving for you. Right is is make the house a home. Right, that's what you got to do. Last but not least, for the sisters. After affirmation, spiritual connection, communication, conversation, affection. Number five, companion. She wants a companion. Listen, you got to understand this. From the womb to the tomb, women have, our girls and our women have been groomed for marriage. They have read all the novels. They have seen the, the knight in shining armor. Right? To, to oftentimes, we have uh, made marriage an idol because we have created this, this level of fantasy that oftentimes us as brothers don't even have the capacity to fulfill. But if you can give her companionship where it's it's heart to heart communication, where you, you got special time away with her, where you wanna not just grow old, but you grow young together through togetherness, she needs to know that you're gonna work hard for her just like you work hard at that job. She wants to laugh with you. She wants to play together with you. She, she wants to stay the course with you and, and work through the details and work through some of the minutia to understand, yes, we may be different, but we will not be deficient. All right, let's, let's go to uh, the brothers. I just need all the sisters to scream one more time. If you if you agree with companionship, if you agree with affirmation, Hallelujah. spiritual connection, communication, Hallelujah. affection, amen. just yes. yeah, that, yes. say amen Mark, to that. Yeah. Say amen. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen. Uh, amen. Let's go to the wild card, us as brothers, because oftentimes, uh, sisters, y'all might think that we're really uh, hard to understand. We really are simple. <laughs> we so simple. Uh, let me give you a man's needs. It's, it's, let me give you a man's needs. A man's needs. Here it is. Uh, a, a husband's needs. Let's go this this way. Sex, a sandwich, and silence. Do I do I got some brothers who agree with me tonight? <laughs> Sex, a sandwich, and silence. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with you. Uh, listen, he's thinking it, but he ain't gonna, he just gonna look straight this way. He ain't gonna look at you. He just gonna look straight. That brother, show sure enough, is telling the truth. Tonight. Hilarious. He's telling the truth. Um, all right, let's go to it. Beyond the physical, let's look at the deeper level of what a man's needs are. One is admiration. One is admiration. Sister, he needs your respect. Can you encourage and remind that man of the champion that's within him? Can you remind him of the champion that he is? Listen, after he's done flying around all day being Superman, he needs a safe place to land. Can he be vulnerable enough? Can you create a safe space for him to be vulnerable enough, here it is, to take off the cape and not be Superman, but be Clark Kent? Not be Black Panther, but be T'Challa. Right? Can, can he take off the, the cape with you? Or are you always talking about what he's not doing? Who he's not becoming? Well, you see this couple over here, they got this and I ain't got that. It's, it's, it's self-deprecating and it doesn't build his confidence. Here it is. 
If a man can't get admiration from you, he will find it from somewhere. And, and check this out. That's why you see a lot of men privately or even publicly who struggle, we'll even go this way, with pornography. It's, it's not really the sex that he's after. It's not really the fantasy that he's after. Because we hear too many women who say, well, my husband's dealing with this whole aspect, so on and so forth. Of course, it's a spiritual attack, without a doubt. But even if you look on the natural level, the natural level is he's going to that for validation. Not the best, not, of course, we don't condone it. But you got to look at the whole aspect of it. Why did he step out of the marriage? Not that's necessarily something was wrong with her, but oftentimes what's going on within him. That's why I said, as brothers as well, you've got to be in a place to where you're not knee deep, but you're knee dead. Women have to create that opportunity, that safe space and place for him to have a soft place to land, for him to be vulnerable, for him to say, you know what, baby, I'm struggling with this. Ber versus him being vilified for it. Maybe there's some things that he's struggling with because we always talk about sisters, one out of three girls are sexually abused before 18. But here it is, one in six males are abused before the age of 18. Women will talk about it, but us as men, we keep it hush hush. Why? Because we always have to appear strong. while we're fighting battles inside. So he needs admiration. He needs, he needs to be built up. I told you before, a man gets hit in the corner, gets in, hit in the ring, but he doesn't want to get hit in the corner too. Bandage him up, don't box him. Number two, a man needs recreation. He, ne he needs recreational companionship. That's why he wants to watch March Madness. That's why he wants to play pool with the boys sometimes. That's why he wants to go and work out. That's why he put a fitness little area in his home. That's why he got a couple of uh, dumbbells where he's curling every single day, right? He, he has a desire to be involved in challenging activities or some form of recreational hobby. And here it is, this is the, this is the, this is the, the, uh, the key that starts the ignition right here that you can participate in as sisters. When you get involved and show interest in watching what he likes. He likes to watch the game. He likes to maybe sometimes play the video games. If you get involved with what he likes, watch how that causes him to open up. Well, who's your favorite player, baby? I, I know you hate, I know you don't maybe like the NBA or the NFL, but, uh, Say, baby, since you're going to watch the NBA, we can watch the WNBA, too. Now, now that's going to pique his interest right there. Oh, she's really interested in what I want to do, too? You will be amazed at what happens when you become interested in what a man is interested in. Well, my husband don't open up to me. My man don't open up to me at all. Start trying to open up the vault door to what he likes. And that's a gateway for him to open up about other things. Thirdly, after admiration and recreation, thirdly now is attraction. I just need every brother to say amen to this one. Amen. Amen. Sister, the brother needs you to be visually appealing and attractive. He needs you to look good. <laughs> so, so that means he needs you to be physically fit. Right? He, 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 wa he wants you to do those. Uh, I, I ain't saying that you need to go and uh, blow your body up and go get no surgeries and nothing like that. A little exercise goes a, wrong, a, go, a, little exercise goes a, a long way. 
Bible says exercise profiteth little, but guess what? It's going to do a whole lot of much. <laughs> right? So he needs you to be visually appealing. He needs you to be attracted. I know sisters say, well, I need him to be attracted too. Okay. Well, he should be doing that too. But like I told you before, a man is stimulated by what he sees. Listen, if he wasn't stimulated by what he sees, why are you getting your hair done? Why are you getting your nail done? You're not putting on makeup for the sisters. Why, why are you doing those uh, gluteus maximus exercises then? Why are you looking over your shoulder to see if he looked when you walked past? Because you know that he's stimulated by what he sees. So guess what? If you, if you had it tight before you met him, don't just let it go after that. Well, I got him now. My work is done. <laughs> no. Listen, if, if you had to, if you had to uh, uh, turn a trick to get him, you're going to have to pull a rabbit out the hat to keep him. <laughs> Attraction is, is serious. And is, do I, am, I only, am I the only brother talking tonight? Do I got some other brothers who believe it? it maybe, maybe these brothers I'm are blind you. tonight. Maybe, they, I'm, maybe I'm talking to some brothers who straight up Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. I don't know. And we here with you. <laughs> I, maybe I'm talking to some brothers who were just so heavenly and high minded that they say, "I don't, I don't see no more. I, I, I just see in the spirit." No, my eyes still work. I don't know about you. My eyes still work. I'm anointed, and my eyes still work. It ain't one or the other. It's, it's, it's both and. So one, admiration, two, recreation, three, attraction, four now, person, personal expansion. I want you to write that down, personal expansion. What do I mean by personal expansion? Men need space. A man needs a space. Listen, before even the woman came on the scene, a man had all the space to himself. Adam had to first be alone before and qualify himself on that level before he was given a purpose partner. He had purpose, he had place, he had presence, he had power. A man needs personal expansion. Men have to have some time to themselves. I'm not saying, well, well you, you just let the man come back home at 2 a.m. in the morning. We ain't talking about that. Sometimes in his house and in his home, he just needs some time alone in his office. He may need time alone. His time alone is by going to the gym, right? We need time because we need a plan. We need to strategize our business pursuits, our goals. We just need some time to think. We got to have time to just refresh ourselves and to just move in that specific capacity of the space. If that were not so, why do men have man caves? Because we have to have a space and a place to go. It's great that your wife provides a space, but you still need your own space sometimes. A man has to have a place to be able to go sometimes. Uh, last but not least, spiritual connection. A kingdom man is a spiritually connected man. He hears from God. He needs a woman who hears from God. He has a desire, here it is, to grow spiritually, daily. Right? He, so he needs spiritual connection with God. He needs spiritual connection with his spouse. But here it is. He also needs a spiritual connection with other brothers who are on the path that he is. Bible said, in Proverbs, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. He doesn't want to be around dull brothers. He's got to get around brothers who are going to sharpen him. Right? A spiritually connected man 
is a spiritual leader. Being a husband and being the provider for your family literally is the toughest job that you're going to ever take on. And so as a woman, you've got to harness and hone that spiritual development that's on the inside of him. If he's not spending time with God, you got to encourage him to spend time in his word. You got to talk about scripture with him. You got to pray with him. You got to pray for him. You got to make time for fellowship. And then you also have to worship together. So again, I, I mentioned number one, admiration, two, recreation, third, attraction, fourthly, personal expansion, fifth, spiritual connection. Now notice this, sister. Notice from men, I said nothing about love. Isn't that interesting? The reason I said nothing about love is not that he doesn't need love, but his primary need is admiration and respect. You need affection. He needs admiration. Affection for you is love. Affection for him is admiration. That's his love. Not that he doesn't need it, but it's shown in that way. If you love him, you're going to respect him. If you love him, you're going to show him that you admire him. And because of that, when you talk about that, what you should be looking for in a relationship, much less what you should be bringing to a marriage, the question becomes, are you desiring or looking to start a relationship because you're impatient and need to just be with somebody? Because here it is, when you do that, you give birth to Ishmael and not Isaac. I'm coming around the mountain, here I come, I'm getting ready to close this. I just need somebody just to type Ishmael. I need, I need somebody just to type Isaac, not Ishmael. Too many times we've been so presumptive. We, we've, we've given birth to Ishmael and not Isaac. Isaac is the promise. Ishmael is premature. And here it is, it's premature Oftentimes our relationships are premature and they're not purpose driven. Let me let me say this. Let me say this right quick. Ishmael is a product of impatience. Well, I got to have somebody right now. I'm, I, I got to have a I don't want to have a geriatric pregnancy because I'm already 35 or 36 right now. I got everybody's pressuring me to get married. Everybody's pressuring me to do this. Everybody's pressuring me to do that. I, I, I need to post me and somebody else on social media. You're trying to post somebody before every kiss begins with K. And that's not okay. Right? It's premature because it's been out of patience. And so you settle for Ishmael when God wants to give you Isaac. I'm wondering tonight, do you have a sense that God wants to bring this person into your life as a part of his plan or is it your plan? Listen, if you started the relationship and God ain't in it, then this is what you need to do. You need to drop it. It needs to be this. If God ain't in it, then I don't want to be either. Hey, man. I'm going to leave you with this. The relationship that you're in, does it pick on your promise and purpose? Is the connection that you have in your relationship bringing isolation between you and God? Or is it bringing revelation because the relationship draws you closer to God? And if it's bringing isolation, generally it tends to deal with manipulation. If they're preventing you from being all that you can be in God, they will never be good to you, much less for you. You got to be needed, not needy. Ishmael is needy. Isaac is needed. And I don't know about you. Maybe some brothers will testify tonight. Like Jacob, biblically, I don't want Leah. I want Rachel. Leah is needy. Rachel is needed. Ishmael is needy. 
Isaac means laughter is needed. God's going to give you such a blessing that you're not going to be bitter about what happened in your past. You're going to laugh because God brought you joy in your future. I, I just want to release this word right now. You, God is going to make you laugh. Isaac means laughter. God is going to make me laugh because in this relationship, in this marriage, I'm getting ready to have joy. God's going to make you laugh in year 10 of your marriage. I don't know who I'm talking to. The first five years might have been toxic. The first nine years might have been trouble. But God's about to make you laugh. It looked like your relationship and your marriage was an, an Ishmael type of situation. But God is turning that thing around. I'm moving into my Isaac. I'm moving into my destiny. I'm not moving into isolation. I'm moving into revelation. I'm not moving into toxicity. I'm moving into truth and triumphant and transformation. Because I'm not needy, I'm needed. I'm needed in a relationship. Listen, all that you bring to the table, you're not thirsty. You're only thirsty for the living God. You're only thirsting for the living water. But all that you bring to the table, somebody's a fool to walk past you. All that you bring to the table, you are needed. I just need somebody to type, I'm needed. Listen, needy folk, they throw away like a napkin. But when I'm needed, here it is, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You, you are needed because of the prayer warrior that you are. You are needed because of the type of wife that you yeah. can bring into somebody's life. You are needed because of the type of husband that God has prepared you to be. You are needed because of your vision. You are needed because of your power. You are needed because of the way that you think. You are needed because of your creativity. You are Amen. needed because of the obstacles you've overcome. You are needed because you walk in healing. You are needed because you walk in wholeness. You are needed because you know how to pray the enemy out of, out of people's bodies, sickness and disease can't stay in there. You are needed because you know your value and your worth. You're needed tonight. Come on, somebody, somebody just type it. Somebody just type, I, I'm needed tonight. Come on, if you with your spouse in your house tonight, just lay hands on their shoulder, say, you're needed, you're needed. I need you in my life. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We're going to stick a fork in it. I'm done tonight. We're going to pray for every relationship tonight uh, before we close it out. Um, but here it is tonight. It, am I turning it over to you, Desiree, or do you want me to keep on keeping on? You can keep on keeping on. <laughs> okay. Listen, this word that came into your spirit tonight, you're not needy, you're needed. The day and age of having Ishmael relationships is over. This is your Isaac season. This is your season to laugh at what made you cry. This is your season to rejoice over what you were tripping about. Uh, this is your season of revelation and God's divine uh, uh, ordination, but also his divine power over your life tonight. Um, listen, I dare not uh, provide an opportunity for you to sow into this word. I want, I want to sow into this word tonight. I want us to, uh, this is our offering. We're going to pray and then we're going to go into Q&A. Uh, but I want you to sow into this word tonight. I want you to sow into this word. Some of you um, can sow into this word. Listen, if you're single, if you're single tonight, if you're not married, I want you to sow a seed of $100 uh, for my couples tonight. I want you to sow a seed of $200. Um, our pro our, our, I almost called a pastor. <laughs> our prophetess tonight has taught us about the, the laws of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest. David asked the question. He said, what shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits? Um, he could not find anything because what can I give to the Lord that he doesn't already have? He already owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but this is what he said. I will take 
this is what I want you to do tonight. I want you to take a seat in your hand. Some of you can give by Cash App. I don't know if you do by PayPal. I don't know if you do a wire. Um, but some of you can give tonight. You can give a seed tonight of $100. Because it's not as a debt that you owe, it's a seed that you sow. Our couples tonight, I want you to sow into this word uh, a seed of $200. When Jacob had a visitation from the Lord, what he did was he built an altar. Listen, we don't have to build an altar tonight. Not just an altar physically, but an altar means a place of sacrifice. Listen, I know I can give it if I feel it. And, and, and when I'm talking about feeling it, meaning if it costs me something. Listen, for you to get into this marriage that you're in, for you to prepare to be a purpose partner, for you to desire what it is that God wants you to have in the aspect of relationships, healthy relationships, building purposeful partnerships, it costs you something. It's a form of sacrifice. And I want you to sow in, my couples tonight, I want you to sow into the healed marriage that you're gonna be experiencing tonight. I want you to sow into to the vision of what you have for longevity. I want you to sow into the ministry of your marriage. You understanding that this is a merger, that you understanding that this is a marathon. I want you to sow into the blessing that your marriage is going to bring. I want you to sow into the, the generational curses that are being broken. My singles tonight, I want you to sow into the whole aspect of where God is preparing you. I want you to sow into the, into the foundation that God is preparing you for what he's prepared for you. Somebody tonight, you can name your seed healing. Somebody tonight, you can name your seed preparation. Somebody tonight, you can name your seed needed. Some matter of fact, somebody tonight says, here it is, I, I, hear, I hear God saying, name that seed Isaac. For all the tears that you sowed, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Joy is coming, laughter. For all the times that you've been in pain, you're getting ready to leap into power, promise, prosperity, potential. Name that seed Isaac tonight. Whatever it is that you believe in God for, I want you to name it. I want you to sow that seed if you're single tonight, $100. And some of you are saying, I'm believing double for my trouble. I, I don't just want to sow $100 as a single person. I want to sow $200 because I'm believing for a double portion of, of strength. I'm believing for a double portion of God's anointing and power. I'm believing for double laughter in my life. Somebody who's, who's married says, you know, I can go beyond the 200. I can sow 250. I, I, matter of fact, my wife and I, we're gonna sow $400 together. I, I wanna double it because God's gonna give me double for my trouble. Um, is that information there on the screen? Yes, it is. For you to be able to sow tonight, uh, we see Cash App, Dollar Sign, Lifeline, TNT, you see Venmo, you see Zelle, uh, you see PayPal, uh, you see the website, you see the bank information. It is all there. Um, Prophetess Tarver has taught the whole aspect of reciprocity. When there's a divine word from God tonight, and that word is on relationships and marriage. It's only right that we sow into it. Let's pray tonight. Kind and gracious Father, we thank you for uh, this word. We thank you for this offering that we're able to sow tonight. That we are sowing into good ground. We're sowing into life and that more abundantly. Because you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And tonight, God, we put a demand on these gifts that we sow. We put a demand on your anointing. We put a demand that we know that you will bless us. Blessing us, not just back in money, but blessing us in health. Blessing us in well-being. Blessing us in peace of mind. Blessing us in our marriage. Blessing us in preparation for the marriage. Fortifying our spirit. Moving us into the greater power of your anointing. Moving us into the place to where we have a receptive ear to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this seed reaps a harvest of 30, 60, 
a hundredfold. I command every household to be blessed. I command finances to move into abundance right now. I command signs and miracles and opportunities to happen in the name of Jesus. I release favor right now, favor to hit your home, favor right now to give you promotions that you didn't even ask for. We declare and decree right now opportunities and open doors that no man can close. In the name of Jesus, we declare it, we decree it. Every demonic assignment over their life is canceled. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We declare that they're healed, their, their children are healed. We declare that sickness leaves their body right now in the name of Jesus. Now God, fortify every marriage. Fortify us for the right relationships. We thank you for healthy relationships. We thank you for love. We thank you for camaraderie, for companionship, for all that you have desired for us, that we walk in it in this day, this time, this season, this hour of power, this minute to win it and moment to own it. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, thank God for it. Thank God for it. Amen. Some of y'all that just start Hallelujah. laughing right Amen. now. Amen. I'm laughing Amen. in the face of the enemy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And the world, sure enough, cannot take it away. Uh, let's take it away in this aspect. Let's go to our Q&A. I hope somebody received tonight. If you received anything tonight from this word that was dropped in your spirit, uh, just type, I receive. Just type, I receive. You received it all tonight. I just want you to type, I receive. Uh, we want to receive your questions tonight, uh, questions that you may have. Uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself. And uh, we would love to hear your question that you would like to bring to uh, uh, the virtual table tonight. <clears throat> I have a question. Oh, um, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Let's let's hold on one minute. Hold that question one minute. Let's play this video. I'm, uh, let me do that. Let's play this video right quick and then we'll go back to that.
right. I don't know uh, about you, but I just love that whole CD. Uh, I'm always humming it, uh, <laughs> singing along with it, off key that is. But uh, we're, we're grateful to God. Of course, our, our incredible prophetess, uh, Taryn Tarpa, will let us uh, continue to uh, keep her in prayer and pray for her as God rejuvenates her, uh, your, her strength, uh, because she pours out so much. And uh, we're blessed to be able to pour back into her. Listen, shameless plug, if you do not have my book, Relationship Rules, you are playing yourself. <laughs> my man, Guy Hill, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm going to just call my man GK. I appreciate him. Uh, and listen, more of y'all need this book. It is number one right now on Amazon for a reason. Uh, went number one on March the 4th, and we still number one. I'm so blessed. I was just checking the, the website today, and so many people have uh, supported the book. If you don't have it, you need to go ahead and get it. Uh, we have 14 rules in here that are so needed and necessary. I wasn't able to get to two of the rules tonight, but I'm going to get to them next week. Uh, a few more rules. Okay, Doro, you got uh, uh, 2020 vision. I love it. I love it. Uh, and some of you all supported uh, Wife and Dear Queen and Woman and all those other books. Uh, but if you don't have this one, go ahead and get it. If you got what well, copy, share one for you, a friend and loved one too. It's all about how to win at love leadership and uh, leveraging your purpose. Dora, uh, there, there I call you Dora the Explorer. Um, go ahead and uh, let's explore the question that you have tonight. It's funny because it's that's actually my mom's name, but I'm logged in her wow. Zoom, so my mom's name is Dora. Oh. But my name is Julie. <laughs> no worries. Oh, oh okay. Um, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 2020 vision. Yes, I have the book, and it's funny because my question it was in regards to vision. So my question is, mm. how do we make sure that our vision aligns up? As a single person, how can we know that we're compatible with that person? Wow, that's good. Uh, how do you make sure your vision lines up? How do you know you're compatible with that person? Um, see, the one, one thing is this, is that being with a purpose partner does not mean that they need to do the same thing as you. Well, I, I, I sing on the praise team. Do they need to sing on the praise team too? Not necessarily. They can usher. <laughs> they can... Uh, they can be an office assistant, whatever the case may be, but do they support the vision? Do they wanna see you grow and prosper? Because a lot of times we get involved in relationships with people who are intimidated and whoever you intimidate is who you will eliminate. So that whole level of friendship is so needed and necessary to find out, does somebody have a vision? You'd be surprised, a lot of people don't, much less what is their vision for their life if they do have one? Um, what do they desire? Do they want marriage? Do they want children? Um, how are they growing in their relationship with God? What are they doing every single day to feed their spirit? Do they read books? What type of music do they listen to? Right, Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, whatever they're allowing into their eye gate, ear gate, is what's going to come out of their heart, what's going to be spoken out of their mouth. So being able to find out what somebody's place is in God, but also where they at in life. What is their purpose? Dr. Miles Monroe said, vision is purpose in pictures. So the purpose that I have should now give me a blueprint for my future panoramically to actually see the picture of what it is that I wanna accomplish. When I know the picture of what it is that I wanna accomplish, now I'm able to communicate that to you. So I think based upon what you're hearing somebody say, uh, the, the fruit of the root of what they say should be connected to the fruit of their actions as well. Seeing where it is that they are and then now discovering is there compatibility on that level? But then beyond just compatibility, is there suitability for us to be able to build something long term? Because we know, we, we, and that's why it's very important. I said this last week, that it's very important that you go through the seasons with people. Spring, summer, winter, fall. You know, in the spring, you see an attitude springing up, right? In the summertime, they want to be a hot boy, or a hot girl summer. Uh, all of a sudden, she got knees like Megan Thee Stallion. Or, or now he want to be NBA young boy, but he's supposed to be a grown man. 
right? Uh, now they in the fall and now they fall in back. Now in the winter, they, they supposed to feel like a winner, but now they acting like a loser. So going through the seasons with people to see the changing, the vicissitudinous. And the fact of the matter is, the only person who doesn't change is Jesus. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not going to change to be in a relationship with you. You got to change to be in a relationship with him. So if he doesn't change, I change, you change, they going to change. Can you handle the changes? And I think it, it brings us to the question, do I lose my peace because I'm with them? <laughs> that's, that's one thing. Is my peace sustained? Does it go to another level? Or now do I have less peace because I'm in a relationship with you? So those I gave you a few things to think about, but. Yes, thank you so much. So much wisdom. <laughs> welcome you're welcome absolutely the, the questions the question uh door is open i can walk on through y'all quiet tonight is is, is y'all having trouble with the mute button or what is who else wants to share tonight? Who else got a question? All right, I guess we in, we having a sila moment. We, we thinking of thinking on these things. It's, Y'all asking, y'all ain't asking me no questions as if y'all in trouble. You know, when you, you, mama said, don't ask no questions. Why? <laughs> don't ask why. It's because I said so. Just. <laughs> I, I got a question. Um, so, because you, you talked about like the five. First of all, thank you for the word. Amazing. As always. You have bars as always. <laughs> um, if you don't make the album, I will. I will drop the album. Uh, <laughs> you 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 definitely will be getting the writer credit because <laughs> uh, it's gonna be all your bars. Um, but I, I guess my question was: I was surprised when you talked about the five things that a woman needs, and you didn't mention something that was surprising to me because I felt like you were gonna mention this thing, but I wanted to know would security for a woman fall under those five things as well? Um, and what are your thoughts on a woman needing security from a man as an important, significant thing in their life? Yeah, uh, that's, that's definitely important as well. Um, a lot of times women feel secure um, alluded to a little bit when they when there's communication and conversation because the communication now gives her direction of where we are going. Um, it makes her in a place feel secure because you're communicating, not only communicating, but also showing the aspect that I can provide. I am emotionally available because how many women have connected to so many uh, emotionally unavailable men. So marriage definitely is a, a security aspect for her. Um, I mean, we can see from antiquity until now that uh, a woman doesn't wanna have to shoulder the blame of life all on her own. Mm. Um, and so being able to be a man who is a provider and a protector, but also collaborates with her as a prayer warrior, that whole aspect of spiritual connection. Um, 
that gives her the whole aspect of security. Mm-hmm. Can you communicate? Are you stable in regards to those four things, purpose, place, presence, power? You know, do you have a, a job? In, and if you do have a job and you see yourself moving into entrepreneurship or even staying at that job and moving to another place that's higher, what parameters are you putting in place for that? To where um, she doesn't have to be the breadwinner and uh, slay the pig and bring home the bacon. Mm, right. Right. So um, I think that brings us to that that whole aspect of um, security is a necessity. And you know, the a more the more that a woman is able to hear a man communicate what his expectations are but also he walks it like he talks it. Come on. Now she's able to trust. That's good. And that goes back to that whole aspect of um, uh, the affirmation, the affection as well. She's more apt to love and trust her heart in your hands when she feels safe and secure. Mm. That's good. That's deep. Yeah. Appreciate, your, appreciate your wisdom on that. Oh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Questions, questions. I have a question, Dr. Connor. Who is that talking? It's here. I have my I have my, I have it off. I'm sorry about that. Okay, okay, okay. Hey. Um so I honor you and I thank you. And you're very much an inspiration. But my question is, I was prophesied over it and told to prepare for marriage. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm in the re- I'm gonna be 100. Like I'm in a place in my life I'm not feeling myself. I'm not my usual self. So how do you like mentally? Because you have to love yourself before you can love anyone else, right? How do you mentally prepare? How do you? What are some mental exercises? And what are some things to get rid of your baggage? What are some key components or some tips, some keys? Because if I'm going into a marriage and I'm telling and I was told to prepare, I don't want to bring nothing with me, no past relationships, no drama, none of that. I want to be a safe haven. I want all those things. So what are some key components I can use or strategies? Yeah, good question. Um, you mentioned the prophecy that you got about preparing for marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, that whole aspect, I believe as well, the preparing for marriage is not just solely focusing on the partner, but it's focusing on being the right partner. So it, it first begins with you before it begins with them. And prophecy is forth telling prophecy doesn't mean it's going to be a microwave blessing to where it just happened to the next 24 hours necessarily especially when you talk about marriage oftentimes mm-hmm. that is there's a level of uh prophecy that is also in conjunction with obedience so and oftentimes sometimes the obedience means doing the work internally and so the aspect of the emotional baggage that a lot of times we are carrying are the things that we need to write out. Sometimes we need to seek therapy for. Uh, sometimes we just need to put it all out on the table. This is what I'm dealing with. Because you first, you said you're not feeling like yourself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Uh, that heaviness that is on you. Um, God even says he's lifting that heaviness that's off your life, that's been all on your mindset. I that see. Been, in many cases, it is, is as if it's baggage that I, I see you've been carrying something, but you've been bent over. You're not even looked at the hills where your help comes. You've been, you've been looking to a, a lower level of yourself. Oh, but God I- said tonight, daughter, daughter, I'm lifting up your head. God said tonight, daughter, I am the glory and the lifter up of your head. All the things that the people have placed on you, the the negative opinions, the hurt, 
The shame and the pain has weighed you down. But oh. God said tonight, I'm placing a crown on you. He said tonight, daughter, you are my daughter of Deborah. You are my daughter of destiny. He said, I'm placing a crown on you. And he said tonight, daughter, you crown yourself. He said, go back to a crown yourself with love. Crown yourself with diligence. Crown yourself with patience. Don't crown yourself with people's expectations. Crown yourself with the love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart. And he said, as you put the word on me, it's going to take the words of all the negativity that has been placed on you. As you put the word on me, he said, put the word on my situation, that emotional baggage that you've been carrying, put the word on it. That, that depression that you've been having, put the joy of the Lord that is your strength on it. The toxicity of what other people have said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I speak liberty over your life tonight. I speak peace tonight as you, even as you rest tonight, you've been tossing and turning even in the, the midnight hour, wondering how this situation is gonna work out. But God said tonight, even as you rest, I'm putting the situation, here it is, I'm putting it at rest. Yes. I'm putting what you've been dealing with to rest. You're not going to worry about it anymore. That is so true. You're not going to be dealing with other people's expectations anymore. But this is what you got to do. You got to give, you got to stop giving CPR to what is dead. You got to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the mountains of God. It's no need for you holding on to what God wants you to let go of. Listen, it's, it's going to hurt you sometimes to release it, but it's going to hurt you more to, to hold on to it. You got to cast your cares on him for he cares for you. Um, I, I want you to read, there's a book called The Power of a Praying Woman. Power of a Praying Woman. By Dr. Miles Monroe. I want you to read that book. There's another book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. I want you to read, those are two books particularly that I want you to read, but I also want you to read um, about the life of Esther. I want you to read about the life of Esther in scripture. And I also want you to read about the life of Ruth. As you're preparing for your purpose partner, here's something that's not only gonna bless you, but also sisters too, who are single, wanting to be found. Ruth was found in the field. Hear me very clearly. The right person for you is going to find you in your field. Yeah. What is your field? Your field is your purpose. You got to get back into the place of your, if you don't know what your purpose is, this is your season to discover it. The person for you is going to find you in your field. They can't find you in your field if you don't know what your field is, if you in the wrong field, or if you haven't stepped into the field. I don't know if your field is nursing. I don't know if your field is as an author. I don't know what, if your field is as an entrepreneur, but whatever your field is, you got to prosper in your field. You got to sow into your field. You got to understand um, that this battle that you've been going through, the battle's not yours, the victory is yours. And so raise your, square your shoulders tonight, lift your head and understand that God is crowning you uh, with another level of glory tonight. Thank you so, so much. I needed that. And I think I, it was hard for me to let it go because I feel like if I let it go, I was a failure. Like it felt like, it felt like, why is it not prospering? And it felt like I kept beating a dead horse, I feel like, because I'm like, I want to succeed. You, you, don't, you don't need to feel like a failure. Listen, you can't succeed without failing. Michael Jordan said, I've missed over 10,000 shots in my life. And the reason I succeed is because I failed. Every failure gets me closer to success. Just because I tried it and I di it didn't work, there's, there's another level of where it's going to work. Um, the, the, the inventor of the light bulb uh, had over 
5,000 mishaps and mistakes, but every single mishap got him closer to turning the switch on. Listen, I don't care if we were in a room and there's 10 doors there, only one is unlocked, and you tried nine. You don't just stop at the one door that won't open. Listen, if it don't open, it's not your door. You keep going to the next door. Rejection is direction. Rejection is redirection. Every closed door gets me closer to the open door. Every failure gets you closer to success. You're not just a conqueror. Listen, if you failed and, and now you succeed, you're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You got to keep telling yourself when, when failure wants to creep in my mind, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Listen, I never was the greatest reader. So I always read the word impossible as I'm possible. Y'all going to get that next week. Delete the letter T off the word can't and turn into what you can do. Failure is not my finality. Failure is not my destiny. Failure is not in my future. Thank you so much, Dr. Connor. I, I see one more hand up. Maybe we can just do one more question from CJ. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and, and let Dr. Connor, you know, uh, have the night. Uh, we thank him for his time. Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Kind of? No. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. We can hear you, Minister Desiree. Okay. Thank you. So, CJ, go ahead and ask your last question. This will be the last question of the night. Thank you, Dr. Connor, for your time. CJ, you there? Absolutely. Okay, I see them there, but they're not saying anything. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call it a night. You know, uh, can you guys hear me? Because I'm seeing a, it's a little delayed on my end. Just making yes. sure. I can okay. hear you. Okay, great, great. Thank okay. you. So um, we definitely have some upcoming events coming. Uh, make sure that you're on for next Saturday. Uh, we're coming back again strong at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Make sure that you're attending the 6 a.m. Bible study from Monday through Friday. Um, make sure you, you go to www.lifelinetnt.org. Make sure you reserve, you RSVP for the events that are coming because, you know, we have prophetic school coming up in April. Uh, we have a credit repair in April. We have the monthly men's meeting. We are a, a ministry that is meeting, moving with speed all the time. And we're always imparting and impacting your life with, with just different things so that you can grow. You don't have no choice but to grow in this ministry. So we honor you again, uh, Prophetess Taryn, Mama T. We love you. We thank you for this marriage seminar. We thank you, Dr. Connor, for your time again. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Praise God. Absolutely. And uh, uh, we love having you here. So the, as, as long as the marriage seminar goes, you're always welcome. You know that, Dr. Connor. <laughs> so you guys have a wonderful Saturday. We're going to call it a night. And we will see you next time. She said, right. Thank you, you, Dr. Connor. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Dr. you. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Oh. Prayers go up and blessings come down. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Lord, this is what I found. Prayers go up, blessings come down. Favor ain't fair, Lord, this is what I found. When the praise go up, angels surround. Point to you, Lord, as the blessings fall down. Prayers go up, angels surround. Point to you, Lord, as the blessings fall down.
start hearing this melody. I serve the dark.